Hello. In this video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the ZTE MF920V Wi-Fi modem. So here we have a ZTE MF920V that I'm going to be unboxing right now. Now this particular one I have on me right now is actually branded by a carrier, Optus, here in Australia, but the modem is still the same other than the little branding. This one also came with uh, a SIM included and I paid only 45 Australian dollars for this with the SIM and the SIM has 4 gig worth of data on it. So a modem and data for like 45 bucks. That's not bad. Let's get this out. Just slip that right off. Seems to be stuck. Got the SIM off. No need to do an unboxing and review of that. And then this will just slide off like so. How do we open this thing? Something like that. And we should just be able to... That's thinner than I thought it would be. It's quite, uh, it's quite light as well. Let's put that to the side for a second. What else is in this box? We have a USB cable to US, like mini USB. We have a power block, a quick start guide, and limited warranty conditions. And that is all. On the bottom, we have WPS button and the power button and a little flap and that flap is where you put the micro sim and then over here there's a little reset button and the flap is not going back in it's all right now on the back you just got ZTE and on the bottom a mini USB but it's light cat 4 which is high speed download uh, can connect up to 32 devices at once, which for 45 bucks is pretty good in Australian money. And on the battery on this, it can survive eight hours apparently. Let's turn it on. Wow, look at all those lights. At Christmas time, you can actually use this as a Christmas decoration. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. So that is the unboxing part done. Now for the review. So I've had the ZTE MF920V for about one and a half months now, which is about as sufficient enough time as I need to give you my opinion on it. First of all, what speeds you can get, upload, download. When I was doing my speed tests on this device, they varied a lot, but I guess that's what happens when you're running a 4G Wi-Fi modem like this. Some of the speeds are actually faster than I was getting on my landline. However, those speeds are just not consistent. Sometimes I was getting good download speeds, sometimes not, sometimes good upload speeds, and again, sometimes not. This doesn't show just how fast this modem can go because of course it is limited to the cell towers in my area and where you live will determine the speeds that you get. Our average internet speeds here in Australia are slower than Slovakia. Huh? Oh, that's dreadful. We can't be slower than Slovakia. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jason, can you game on it? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm an avid sim racer that loves to get behind the wheel in my free time, which is also convenient for this review because if you have a bad internet connection, it is very difficult to do online because cars are jumping all over the track and hitting into people and it's bad if you're two hours into an endurance race and then your portable Wi-Fi modem loses connection and all your hard work is over and for nothing. And that is the very reason I have not entered into an online race with this modem because I have found it has been dropping out on me from time to time and it is just too inconsistent in practice sessions so I just don't have the confidence in it. So for the most part, can you game online with it? Yes. Do I recommend it though? No. 
On another note, if you want to try out sim racing, hit my affiliate link for iRacing down in the description. I highly recommend it and give it a good go for three months and maybe you'll get hooked like I am. But iRacing is my favourite and actual race car drivers use it too. In fact it was actually a race car driver that introduced me to it. But anyway, back onto the modem. When you plug the ZTE modem into your computer, it installs a little ZTE app and in that app you can tell your battery percentages, how many people are connected to the network, uploads, download speeds, you can change how far the Wi-Fi goes. It also allows you to set your data limits and when you're getting close to your data limits to let you know. As for how good the Wi-Fi is, in the application you can choose whether you have the Wi-Fi modem on long or where I currently have it on long I'm in the very corner of the house the modem is right beside me here so let me take you to the complete opposite corner of the house the farthest away I can be and let me show you how much strength this has all right it's currently very dark right now See the little Wi-Fi indicator there? Out of a maximum four bars, it actually is fluctuating between three and four. So as you can tell, the uh, long Wi-Fi on the ZTE modem is actually quite good. As for the build quality, it's pretty much what you would expect from ZTE, I guess. It's cheap. I haven't really had any major complaints about it. The battery life can depend on how big your Wi-Fi range is. If you have it set on a long Wi-Fi range, then it's only going to last maybe four or five hours without being plugged in. I've mostly been using the modem plugged into the computer while I'm using it. But if you set that on the short Wi-Fi range, I think ZTE says you'll get about eight hours out of it, which isn't too bad. So if you're using it for work, you probably work for eight hours, you can have it on for your entire eight hours. So thanks for watching everybody. Hit that like button if you like it. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next video.